bullet drop compensating reticles or MILRADs, MRAD reticles, which is the best one for you? That is the topic we are exploring today. So welcome to the Everyday Marksman, the podcast where it's all about tactical skills for living a more adventurous life. This is episode number 53, and I'm your host, Matt Robertson. Our website's everydaymarksman.co, and there you're going to find today's show notes, uh, all the rest of our articles, our social links, and our awesome community of marksmen. I'm glad you could be here today. All right, now this episode is a edited down podcast version of a recent live stream I've done. So yes, news. I have a YouTube channel now. Uh, you can get to it on the website. There's a link under videos, and that takes you to kind of the article versions, but all those link back to the YouTube channel. And as a backup, I'm also on Rumble and Odyssey. But that's not the point. The point is I've been doing live streaming every every other week or so, and I recently had one with Jeff Gerwitz, who you, who you recently heard what, heard from as well as Ilya Koshkin, the Dark Lord of Optics. And I set these two gentlemen up to be kind of on the opposite side of each other with Jeff taking on the role of BDC all the way. And of course, Ilya taking on the MRAD because he is the scope guy. Now, in fairness to Ilya, I kind of <laughs> I kind of missold this whole thing to him as we were going because this all stemmed from another conversation. And I build the stream as... BDC versus precision reticles, and he was very quick to point out to me that he feels cheated and that I misled him about the topic of the show, but it all worked out. It was a great time, and I hope you enjoy the audio today. Now, uh, you'll have to forgive me here, a couple audio mistakes, um, very, very beginner of me on these live streams, in that I didn't realize I wasn't actually using my actual microphone, I was using my computer's microphone, which sounds not so good. <laughs> it's crap compared to my usual audio setup. It also picked up an inordinate amount of just room noise going on, including me clicking the mouse all over the place while I was making the live stream work. So I edited out as much of that as I could. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not going to sound as as warm and, and smooth as I usually do. And I apologize for that. But oh, well, let's get on with the show. We go Jeff if you don't mind introducing yourself uh, and then we'll switch to Ilya introducing himself and then we'll get on with the debate all right Jeff Gerwich um, retired SF guy 19 years in SF 26 years in the regular army I uh, did a bunch of tours in Iraq and Afghanistan in the heydays of uh, you know all the good times with the uh, rules of engagement and the fighting and all that and now I basically uh, just started running my own YouTube channel give a little plug modern tactical shooting and I just started offering uh, training under my own name. I've trained under some other outfits, but it's time to go it, you know, go it alone. All right. Now we're going to bring on Ilya. All right. I am a uh, professional Monday night quarterback. I do this exceptionally well, better than most. Uh, but all jokes aside, um, I'm an optics guy. I have uh, my primary expertise is targeting and imaging systems, uh, more from the nerd engineering side than anything else. But it does bring a somewhat different point uh, to this discussion, so this should be fun. Let's get started. Round one, Jeff, you get the floor. I'm going to give you a few minutes here to state your case about why BDC is the way to go for a general purpose rifle. All right, so BDCs. Well, hands down, we can say right now the JM Pro BDC that comes in a Vortex is one of the most winningest reticles in 3-Gun, but competition aside... Uh, I prefer the BDC in the context of battle rifles, whether it's 5.56, you know, you have a 500 meter gun, if you're rocking 7.62, you basically have an 800 meter gun. A BDC, if you know your holds, can be almost just as accurate, accurate enough to get hits at those distances on man-sized targets. Uh, and more importantly, I think it's it's faster once you get those holes. So instead of sitting there trying to count, you know, MRAD lines, MILRAD lines, you do have that simple hold. And if you're in a DMR role set up in a pre-positioned area where you've already ranged everything out, a mill reticle will work great. But if you're, you know, a soldier out patrolling, reacting to contact, you're now on the enemy's time and the exposure that they give to you. And BDC, hands down, is the faster of the two, you know, types of reticles because it is simple. Uh, and that's why in competition, you know, BDCs are the way to go for three-gun style matches, which I've shot big 
three gun matches and the farthest you normally shoot is out to 500 yards. We're not talking man sized targets. You know, we're talking LaRue size, C zone plates, eight inch plates. So there's a big accuracy factor there. Now, if we did a PRS match where you're shooting out, you know, about six, eight, a thousand yards and you're shooting like say six, six inch plates at a thousand yards. Yes, BDC is probably going to fail you. cannot be accurate enough. You'll need that MRAD reticle, that mill reticle to get your exact hold. None of this means anything if you zero your gun in North Carolina at Fort Bragg and then you deploy to Afghanistan without a re-zero anyways. You're going off of hopes and dreams with 8,000 feet of elevation changes. So you do have to shoot out to the distances that you expect to engage. And one way to make a BDC faster, and you've seen it on buttstocks of guys' guns, and I do this for three gun matches, is I print out a copy of my reticle and I shoot my, my optic for the, for the two ranges, and I just annotate my exact holds for those real ranges. So I'm not having to memorize numbers or anything like that. I'm just visualizing the holds I need. So this makes it plenty fast and accurate enough for me. Ilya, you are up. So I promised to vociferously complain about Matt's duplicity. So when Matt came onto this Discord server and said, BDC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't say you should be using precision reticles instead. And I didn't say that you guys were wrong. I said that you were both right and wrong. And the argument of the precision reticle never came up. The argument uh, was BDC versus Miller radian delineated reticle. Uh, Jeff's argument about BDC basically having known holes that you can correlate to the distance you think you see with your eyes, assuming you can estimate the distance accurately enough, for speed is absolutely the way to go. Uh, my argument is that if you're going to be doing that, there is no compelling reason why you cannot be using a somewhat similar looking uh, milliradian delineated radical, because if you are careful in how you cite this, and this is actually not the best example, but it is a milliradian radical, uh, a good example of such a reticle is the G1 reticle in the new Steiner P4XI. That's a one to four a scope that just did a different reticle. And that one has milliradian delineated holes. So if I just ran on JBM ballistics, somewhat generic uh, 62 grain 56 bullet, 3000 foot per second, 2000 foot elevation, played a little bit with the sight in, and it turned out that my 300 yard hold is exactly half a milliradian. My 350 yard hold is exactly one milliradian. 400 yard hold is 1.4 milliradian. 450 yard hold is 2 milliradian. I was at a 600 is 4 milliradian exactly. So you get your milliradian scale with your normal primary aiming point horseshoe, whatever you like. Mess a little bit with the sight, and this particular sight is 225 yards. And use and out through the distances where you'd be using a BDC, what did you say, Jeff, 500 yards or so thereabouts. You can use a milliradian radical just fine as a BDC. This is the difference between a LPVO milliradian radical and a precision radical. Nobody's saying take a tree radical from the uh, tangent theta and put it in a low power variable. That would be preposterous, right? But you can make a radical that will work as a BDC at the ranges where you're going to shoot it as a BDC while giving you some additional reference points when you're shooting further away. Once again, to turn Jeff's example back on his head, when you're shooting a little bit further, you think you're close, you're a little bit off, and you do the correction. One of the key problems with every single BDC radical out there, when you start doing your corrections, you don't have that much working with. And you, if you're good, and Jeff is clearly good, and I'm not going to tell Jeff how to, uh, how to serve and how to, uh, how to shoot, you have very few reference points. And your brain is not good in making small incremental corrections. Your brain is incredibly good in, in finding the middle between two visible hash marks. You see, that's how human vision works. And if you look at the stuff closer to the center, you notice that the hash marks are almost equidistant from each other, the four and five and three, right? The distances look very similar because it's almost a milliradian radical, except they screwed it up a little bit, they all do. With the right side in, you have your milliradian hashes, works just like your, any normal BDC, this cheat card, Jeff, that you have, where you are running ballistic calculator to figure out which hash mark does what, you can do this with anything, right? So you can do it with a periodic milliradian radical. And then when you're guesstimating, trying to make corrections at longer distance, you actually have more reference points to work with when you're trying to figure out how much to correct, where you saw the impact, and what you're going to work with. So the argument I make is not that BDC is wrong. BDC is a great idea, and it works great. The argument I'm making is that the BDC-specific radicals that are specific for particular ammo are only wrong in one situation, and because the hash marks are not periodic, trying to adjust to them is a little bit of a mess. Is it doable? Yeah. Absolutely, but it is easier 
with the Miller-Radian delineated steps. You guys with me? Make sense? Or should I continue making fun of Matt? I'll be happy to. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do online. All right, now, instead of going with the banter that we were doing within this recording, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the question that gets asked next and then put you right back onto the audio. And one of the questions was, is a BDC better suited towards people who are not trained shooters? And I argued that, well, Jeff is a very highly trained shooter and still prefers a BDC. So let's hear what his answer is. Uh, well, I, I think if you're going to throw an optic out to the masses, like my experience with SF and, you know, they gave us the Elcan one to four when it first came out, it's a great idea to give everybody a BDC because it is half the training time. And, uh, so you're not having to give a, a class on how to, you know, read MRADs or mill dots or whatever. So it's, it's again, for the average masses, I think a BDC is a great way to go. Now, like with anything, can somebody outgrow a BDC and be like, this is not enough for, for me. I want something more. Sure. By all means. And I like, for instance, I ran a VCOG. I had a buddy, he ran a Leopold and he had, you know, reticles in his, uh, but he uh, was more on the, I would say marksmanship side precision wise. Uh, and, you know, he was comfortable with that. Uh, I just ran the BDC. Cause again, I was thinking it was, you know, simpler. Uh, your argument is perfectly valid, but it's an argument about reticle design, not about Milleradian. There are plenty of uh, Milleradian delineated reticles and low power variable scopes, EBR9 and the Razor Gen 3, the reticle, and this guy and a bunch of others that uh, will do all the same ranging quick estimation thing. And one of my big complaints with them is that they do, if they aim them at NAR15, you can, you can mark it in a way that's really uh, apparent, right? You can, let's say, mark the radian on one side and distance where appropriate on the other side a couple of times. And once again, I have a similar design coming out because up close, the milli radian holds match your BDC and match it really, really Im remarkably closely. Okay, You do not have to give up your BTC to use a milli radian based radical in a low power variable or a prismatic. So ah. we're going to get to the nuance piece of this then. Uh, if we could come up with some hard and fast rules for if we're, if we're trying to go to people and say, Hey, you're new and you're maybe a little bit past the new point and you're trying to pick out what is it that you want to do as, an, as a new a new person. Best case, I want to see if you all agree on this, and best case for a BDC. What is your best example? Why would you suggest a BDC for somebody? Uh, okay. shooting, out to five, shooting out to 500 and simplicity. They're still simpler. An average guy could pick up a BDC and think, oh, there's the 300-yard line, whereas you got to know what a mill – rad or mill or mill dot is if you don't have a chrono and you don't have known ranges too you kind of like all right where am i at with this thing okay so the bottom hash is exactly 600 yards one above it is exactly 550 right so this it matches you can use a mill radian radical as a bdc radical you don't have to know ballistics for this run the calculator i can send you a spreadsheet all right so continue the question though so when would you recommend a bdc to somebody I, so the way our point is contention is that you're, di you're differentiating between a BDC and Milleradian radicals, and I'm making a point that a Milleradian radical like this is a BDC plus more, right? So the answer is never then? No, I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> All, right. All right, so then go back to Jeff then. So kind of rest here, because I know, I know where Ilya's going to stand on this one. When would you suggest someone start considering that MRAD style? All right, well... If you're, there's a, well, we're here in the States. So if you're going to jump into PRS precision rifle shooting, BDC is going to let you down. Uh, if you're going to jump into three gun though, BDC is the way to go. But any sort of high accuracy, long distance, then, you know, going with a, you know, an MRAD reticle is going to be better, especially if you're going to really say shoot out to a thousand and you pair that with your ballistic calculators and things like that, yeah, you're gonna get your, your accuracy. And uh, that is, you know, if I hit a if I hit a 500 yard target with my AR and a BDC, I'm like, woo, good shot, I, I got it. That's my combat accuracy. Now, if I get my buddy who shoots PRS out here, he's literally going to shoot a one inch group at that 500 yard plate. Obviously you can't do that with a BDC. You need something else. But I don't have any desire or need for that level of accuracy because, again, it, um, I'm retired now, so I'm not going to be thrown into harm's way. But uh, for the, the style of competitive shooting that I do, 
uh, a BDC works just fine. And, you know, I haven't looked at price points lately, like if there's any real meaningful difference between a price of a BDC type scope. I mean, I own a VCOG, damn thing's almost two grand. It's got a BDC, so I guess not. But it's just simple for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, two grand. Uh, and it's a one to six now, so it's totally update. I need to get like a one to eight or something, one to 10, step up my game. But, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple guy. So, again, I always, I lean towards simplicity. So I'll get my take on here uh, because I'm kind of on both ends of this one. I I, I tend to think MRAT based reticles is what I put in my precision stuff. Oh, I got to go. I'll see you later. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I totally, I understand Ilya's point here too, that if you're doing it in something like a one to six or a one to eight and you, and you understand your ballistic, I see a lot of convenience there of saying, I know my hold is always 1.2. And if you rehearse that as to where it becomes that instinctual thing that we've talked about in the past, and you know that, then it doesn't matter what scope you use, you know, it's always 1.2, assuming everything is, is accurate. And I see a lot of benefits to that. I think for the average person though, who I would say is like, doesn't, doesn't, isn't a gun nerd. And you're just trying to say like, Hey, I need you to as quickly as possible, put, put shots on that target at some distance. I'm not telling you what it is. I can see the benefit there of using a BDC to do it. And, and that's what I've done in some classes where, I mean, it was like fire and maneuver stuff going out to 300 yards and you didn't know. So all I could do is in my L can at the time was, all right, I'm going to guess. And then here we go. Uh, that's kind of my, my take on it. Uh, there's not one right answer, Ilya, but I think in general, it's how, well, you know what I think about that and how fast you have to go. <laughs> All right. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and pivot. I'm going to go ahead and end the interview portion of this podcast right there because we pivoted to the Q&A section of the stream, which if I let it go would play for another 45 minutes and I don't want to take you your time. Now, the conversations we had during that Q&A portion were really good. Uh, there was, you know, not just a about the durability of optics and medium power variables for, with raw set red dots, as well as combat tactics in Syria and Afghanistan. Um, lots of good wandering conversation as streams tend to do. So if you want to check that out, definitely come by the website, everydaymarksman.co. In the show notes of this article, in this podcast, I'll definitely have a link to the video. But on the website, I've got a link at the top now that says videos. You can find that live stream episode and I'll play it right there in the browser for you or just come to the YouTube channel. Um, it was a really good time. I enjoyed the stream, but let's get to the big takeaways I had from this conversation. Now, granted, this was an abbreviated one. There was a lot of context, but BDCs or bullet drop compensating reticles versus MRAD based reticles for a general purpose rifle. What do I now think is the best way to go? Frankly, I don't have a preference. I think they're both really viable options. BDCs do have a certain charm to them. Um, I think they're really usable when your priority is speed. Jeff is not the only person I've talked to who has made that point. A lot of combat veterans have told me the exact same thing, that BDCs really work well when you have speed as a priority. At the same time, Ilya had a really good point there about uh, mill radian based reticles where it's consistent. Or you know the reticle looks a certain way, there's consistent measurements, and you can really do a lot of tweaking with your ballistics. You know, it, it will work for any caliber, uh, any bullet. Uh, you just have to run the math on it. But that's the key there. You have to run the math on it to know what your holds are. A BDC, which yes, it is tied to a particular bullet at a particular uh, at a velocity on a particular kind of weather. But as Ilya even admitted in there, inside 500 yards, it's all really close. And I think for most of us, most everyday people who are shooting inside of 100 to 200 yards, uh, if you're using a BDC radical, it's not going to affect you at all. 200 yards especially. I, mean, I don't think the BDC picks up beyond that. So inside 400, 500 yards, yeah, you're going to be fine. Okay. So if you were to go out and buy, buy tomorrow and be like, you need to buy a new optic, I would say don't worry so much about the reticle and instead go with how the rest of it feels to you. Is, is, it, is it good to get behind? Is the reticle clear? Is it optics? Is it uh, optically going to work for you? One of the issues with a lot of modern prism scopes, ACOGs included, as well as LCANs, is there's no ocular adjustment, whereas a lot of low power variable or even cheaper prism optics that have other reticles in it do. So is it optically going to work for you? Is the illumination good? I think there's a lot of other factors in there that make it more important than what the radical is going to be. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you for coming to listen today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And come on by the website, everydaymarksman.co. And 
if I could have you do me a favor, just consider it. Uh, I do have a support page, everydaymarksman.co forward slash support, where you can come by, you can tip a couple bucks, buy me a coffee, buy me a box of ammo or whatever a few bucks I get for ammo these days. But I do appreciate your support. Uh, everything I do here is entirely funded by readers and listeners and watchers just like you. So that's it. Until next time, friend, I will see you later.